ancient cosmologies of Western countries, similar to the Puranas. This presentation is about ancient cosmologies which have surprising yet undeniable similarities to what we find in the Indian Puranas. That is because there was once a worldwide Vedic culture which later became fragmented and misunderstood. Many such cosmologies do appear very naive today. However, upon analysis the original Puranic descriptions are based on a high degree of spiritual and worldly knowledge. It's best to familiarise yourself with Puranic cosmology by viewing Astronomy the Bhagavad Purana and Invisible Realms in the Vedic Hindu Universe on my channel. Let's go. I'm going to start with ancient Mesopotamia because of its huge historical influence over Western civilization. The Sumerians believed in the plurality of heavens and earths. Incantations of the 2nd millennium BCE refer to seven heavens and seven earths, created by seven generations of gods. This is a Babylonian map of the world, a clay tablet written in Akkadian, depicting their known world. In it, Mesopotamia is surrounded by a circular bitter ocean and seven regions, depicted as triangular mountains, shown lying beyond the ocean. Note that Puranic cosmology similarly includes seven heavenly divisions in the universe populated by successive generations of demigods and the horizontal axis of the Puranic Universe includes the Earth surrounded by concentric circles including various types of oceans and a mountain barrier. Western Europe The Celtic Universe had a number of superior realms above the Earth. The Earth level is the midworld with the four directions. There's also subterranean worlds that could be reached via caves, burial mounds and even fairy hills, again similar to the Puranas. Many scholars conclude now that Stonehenge in southern England once served as a huge solar calendar. Some take it further. They suggest that the entire site was the physical representation of one month with also the annual summer and winter solstices. Stonehenge might have looked something like this around 2400 BCE. At dawn on the summer solstice the rays of the sun would have shone straight through to strike the altar stone in the centre. Nearby Avebury includes two inner stone circle temples of the sun and moon. The outer boundary marked a much larger sacred space. The site may have looked something like this. There's a similar site in Gosek, Germany. It is believed to have been an ancient observatory. The ancient European Druids were influenced by Indian Vastu. A great example today is the Padmana Baswami temple in Kerala. This was shot at high speed on the summer solstice. Check it out. But there's a Greek connection too. Significantly, the Greek god Apollo is the equivalent to the Vedic sun god Suya. He was also the god of arts and healing. The ancient site at Delphi in Greece was once dedicated to Apollo. The circular building there housed the oracle, the high priestesses, the Pythia. Pilgrims consider the site to be the centre of the cosmos. It's worth noting that the architecture of the ancient Greeks includes many circular Stonehenge-like buildings. That is more apparent in overhead plans. Now compare the circular Chosaf Yogini temple in Morena, India. It was a shrine to the Yoginis, daughters of Parvati and Lord Shiva. Thus, there's a Shiva Lingam within the inner sanctum there. And note architectural similarities to the mandap of the Sun Temple in Madeira, Gujarat. The famous Greek Mount Olympus and the Indian Mount Meru are both believed to be the abodes of the gods manifest in this world as a local mountain, but they have links to the celestial world. 
Then there's the Greek star group, the Seven Sisters, called the Saptarishis in India, often known as the Big Dipper today. Scandinavia Ancient Norse cosmology divides the universe into nine realms. The centre of the universe was the great world tree, Idrisil, and the nine realms either spread out from the tree or existed in levels stretching from the roots down and side to side. They saw the world as a disc floating on the sea. In the middle, Idrisil was an axis mundi, making a connection with the cosmos. The Puranic universe describes nine different realms of Jambadweep and huge trees at the foot of the central Mount Meru. Meru is the central axis which also points up to the higher worlds. And, like Norse cosmology, the world is a disk surrounded by a salt ocean. It's also worth noting that the Bhagavad Gita describes an upside down banyan tree that represents the universe, along with all the material distractions and the need to progress upwards. The Gita explains that one who wants to get out of this material existence must know this tree. The United States, North America The Saw Indians have four ages and a buffalo loses one leg as each age passes. Presently it only has one leg. That is exactly what is described in the Vedic Hindu scriptures. The Hopi culture also has four ages which they call the Four Worlds. Navajo cosmography is very similar to what you find in the Puranas. Their homeland's sacred mountain ranges reflect Jambadweep, the Four Directions and the concentric rings of Bumandala. This Navajo sand painting also shows the four directional mountains surrounding a central world mountain. All very interesting, you must agree. Thanks for watching.